And we are off. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Uh, Gordon John Kirk here with Travel Puzzle with Richard Bertram. Richard uh, Bartram. Bartram, sorry. There we go. Uh, I knew I'd get that wrong. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're from WestJet, and we're uh, here in Toronto. I've just picked him up at the uh, at the airport here, and we're doing a little little tour around, have a quick chat, and get an update on uh, all things. So welcome. Thank you. You're taking me by Terminal 1 to show me the competition. Thank yeah. you for that. Well, it's just all part of, you know, <laughs> you guys, we're talking about being disruptors. You guys have been disruptors since you're on set. So uh, now, lots and lots going on. You've Ooh. got your stop and bitter. talk about growing pains yeah it's a uh, we are certainly on the grow I mean I hate to use such a terrible cliche but it does it is quite appropriate for where we are at uh, at our uh, stage in life right now West is 22 years old and we're an airline in in transition so th with that is uh, is a lot of change and an awful lot uh, going on and, and we find ourselves right in the middle of that at this point it's funny earlier um, uh, when we were talking you were saying it's like you went from being a toddler to a teenager. To yeah, you know what? It's, it's funny because if you think about WestJet being 22 years old, it really is interesting to see where, um, if you follow along how you are as a human, that's a, pretty well where we are with WestJet. So we're now 22 years old. Uh, we're maturing. We're uh, we're growing up. Uh, the personality doesn't necessarily change. You went, but through, you went through your teenage years. We went years. through the teenage years when we were 10 and 12 years old. Some of the things we did at the time, you know, you, 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 you maybe wanted to do over, um, but you can't. Um, and you yet learn, you learn from them. You learn from them, absolutely. And so uh, personality-wise haven't necessarily changed. How you express that and how you mature and grow up is exactly where we are as an airline. And uh, like crazy, crazy growth uh, strategy going on. And you, your introduction, first of all, obviously you went with the Q400s and the 767s and your transatlantic stuff. Now the big introduction of the 78 into uh, out of Calgary. So, I mean, tell us a bit about the, the growth strat. Yeah, it's a, and it's been very methodical and very uh, measured and planned out. So, for example, here we are with these... Um, um, with the 787s about to now show up, and that's exciting for us. What What is the, uh, that's a good question, agents might want to know, what's the config going to be up front on the 787? Yeah, so this is, and this is where, you know, now that we're maturing, this is new for us, where we will, for the first time in WestJet's history, have a business class on board the aircraft. So we will have 16 lie flat pods uh, up front as a, as, a, as a business class cabin, then there will be a premium economy cabin, uh, and then there will be the economy cabin. So overall, 320 seats on board. And at the same time, our first 737 MAX uh, just arrived last week, actually, with uh, the new 2x2 cabin configuration up front. Uh -huh. So these are, uh, instead of having that empty middle seat, some uh, I think some agents would have liked to have called it the booster seat, because uh, that's an awful lot of what it looked like, but yeah. that was very much a, a test for us as well, as being very methodical about it to test, is there a market for having the room and that empty middle seat, and, and the low cost way to test that without having to invest millions in new seats was to put in that yeah. seat block. Yeah. So you've gone from um, uh, all of the, the different things that are, are happening with aircraft and expanding routes, and then to, to round it all out, you throw swoop <laughs> in into the mix. Swoop, and, there it is, uh, as the song yeah, goes. Swoop, there it is. We could have done a whole thing. I could have played that too. <laughs> but you, you know, you throw a swoop into the mix as a ULCC, and you know that was viewed by agents with varying levels of degree and. Uh, Perhaps just talk about that and what the impact of Swoop is. Yeah, certainly. I mean, from our perspective, Swoop is a strategic necessity for WestJet as an airline or for WestJet as the WestJet group of companies because the there is a market for ULCCs in Canada. The WestJet had been that LCC that had started back in 1996, and since then we have seen the advent of the of ULCCs. It took a long time for it to get here in Canada. I think a big chunk of that is uh, population density, and you just don't have the market to be able to feed the ULCCs. Yeah. So by launching Swoop and increasing the seat density and making it in the uh, in the style of what is a true ULCC part of the challenge with that becomes uh, that it is only bookable online only through the website and there isn't a commission yeah. um, but that is the style that you see that is truly being a ULCC and catering to uh, that consumer that is looking for that bare bones product offering and that's exactly what and, and with your CEO coming from the Asia market he's rolled out this is not a new, new yeah so if you look him, at so, so uh, Stephen Greenway who's the yep. head of swoop uh, that is 
his background is he is very familiar with running uh, ULCCs around the world, and that is uh, so it is unapol- unapologetically a ULCC in that style, meeting the consumer's needs for, for what they're looking for. So, so the last thing I want to talk about is that I do have a question, but I don't know if I'm going to ask you about it, but uh, I'll, we'll, we'll, Fire I'll, I'll, gauge, I'll gauge your vibe at the end. Okay, we'll see what my face looks Santa, like. When you... Santa, blue Santa, <laughs> and uh, I guess one question which I, and I'm sure some agents would like to know, why the heck is Santa the blue, a blue Santa? Because <laughs> Why? Have you seen the color of the competition? Um, that's the challenge, right? So Santa, yes, traditionally, um, yep. is in a... Uh, is that really the... Uh, is in a red suit. <laughs> and from our perspective, there was not a hope that Santa is going to be in a red suit in our video. So why, but why so it could have been a teal Santa. But well, it could have been teal. And the, the teal is a nice accent color. Um, <laughs> when you go all in on teal... It has a look. It's a beautiful accent color. We're very proud of it and love it as an accent color. Um, but the WestJet corporate colors are, of course, blue and teal. And so there's just the first response. Exactly. There goes the fire uh, from Fire Hall Three. There goes uh, the the uh, so fire department. So but that's exactly it. Was we just said, look, if if um, if our colors are going to be blue and teal, then that's exactly what we're gonna how we're gonna represent. Santa. Now the. Uh, the real question I'll ask you, do you know, <laughs> but no, I won't get there yet. So, I mean, these videos are insanely viral. I don't yeah. even know what the counts are, but they're in the millions of views. Tens on, of millions, yeah. On YouTube. Is, is it that high? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the highest one? Do you think? Well, the, the, the first one, it's technically the second one. The first one we did was in 2012 and it was a flash mob. And we did it just because everybody at that time seemed to be doing flash yeah. mobs all over the world. Yeah. And then in 2013, we did the uh, the one that we actually called the WestJet Christmas Miracle, which was leaving from Toronto, Pearson and Hamilton, mm. flying into Calgary could we chat with people and unbeknownst to them we were taking notes off the side of the camera and writing down everything that everyone was asking for Christmas yeah. buying wrapping and getting it to the airport in the time oh, it took them to fly to okay, Calgary cool. so that one I think is in excess of 45 million views now can you tell us uh, what Blue Santa is getting up to <laughs> well you know it's, it's funny because, because we, we, every we love year. to get the scoops we've had the scoop on swoop uh, things go but uh, if there's any tidbit of info, we can give the user. Well, I can give you some some some, some interesting background stuff on it because I this is oh, this is it's it's the most this is the most ambitious one we've ever done. And interestingly, every year is the most ambitious one. And yet here we find ourselves again uh, doing the most ambitious one. So uh, Blue Santa will be out of the office for about a month. And the wow. guy... Big uh, scoop. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, there we go. Big Hang on, scoop. I'm not done. I'm not done. <laughs> so now the guy who plays Blue Santa is actually the brainchild of the entire... Uh, is I, that right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Really? So it was his idea. And we said, well, we need somebody to play um, uh, Blue Santa. And he said, well... I'm a hefty guy. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll throw on the suit. And the beard that he wears is is $8,000 and is made of yak hair. Really? Yeah. And so it's so we rent it. We didn't buy it. Low cost airline. Um, <laughs> so we rent yak hair every year uh, to be able to make uh, Santa's oh, uh, beard. Man, that's crazy. So crazy. he's uh, so uh, he will be out filming for a month. Um, so that takes him further and further afield. And as we are growing as a global airline, that's why we are further and further afield. And this year will be about connecting people. Used to, we used to do a, a golf trip every year. It used to be called Yak Fest. So I, my buddies that are watching this could put love to have the beard. But so anyway, that may be either so that, the, either the best golfer or the worst golfer should. Have to wear the yak, the yak beard. beard for, well, not at eight grand. That's the wrong group. And you know what I'm talking about. Wrong group. So I guess the question I wanted to get to is all that. What is the the budget it's uh it's it's not a modest budget um but it really is an important part of the WestJet brand there's not many companies who are in the enviable position of um, having people wait to see what they're going to do no. at Christmas. So, you know, we, we actually get people saying, what are you doing this year? Look at the conversation yeah. we're having yeah. right now. So when you have people waiting for your content, you're in a great spot. Well, man, uh, I'm waiting. <laughs> they're waiting. <laughs> Not much longer to wait. I'm, gonna, I'm getting to your drop-off point. So thank you very much. This My was, pleasure. Uh, thank this you, was John. Great. I enjoyed that very First much. First time getting, uh, getting, uh, getting you into the X5. And, yeah, you know, thank you. Next time you're in town, uh, well, winter's coming. We did pick one of the worst days, I think, uh, so far. Well, it's clearing a little bit. I'm a, although the wind is supposed to pick up this afternoon, and and I usually it's great to have a, a West Jetter in the right seat and for aviation buffs. Well, this I feel right like the first seat. officer. Right. I, uh, that would, I make, that would a, make me the captain. That makes you the captain, That's, and I uh, don't have a wheel though. Captain Kirk. So. And having said that, it's time I will go. So I'll see you later. And I can't do an accent. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. This everybody. is we're getting to the the outtake part of the. Uh, <laughs> see you later. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, Richard. Okay, great.